the number of total knee replacement surgeries has skyrocketed over the years, with roughly 750,000 procedures performed annually in the United States. To put this into perspective, there are more knee replacements performed each year than there are people in each of these states. The rise in knee replacements can be attributed to several factors, including an aging population and a shift in medical practice that promotes total knee replacement surgery as a primary treatment option for knee arthritis. However, recent studies have indicated that a significant number of these surgeries may be unnecessary. In this video, we will explore the issue of overutilization of total knee replacement surgery. <laughs> Knee arthritis is a condition that can cause significant pain, reduce quality of life, and greatly limit mobility. Total knee replacement has proven to be a life-changing procedure for many, with research showing high rates of success for improving pain and function, with over 80% of individuals satisfied after surgery. However, the significant increase in, in the annual number of knee replacement surgeries has caused experts to question whether surgeons and patients are becoming too hasty in their decision to undergo surgery. Research suggests that over one-third of knee replacement surgeries in the U.S. are deemed inappropriate, meaning the expected risks outweigh the benefits of the procedure. Many of the surgeries investigated in this study were done on patients whose pain and disability could be relieved with less risky and less expensive treatments, such as weight loss, physical therapy, and pain medication. Another 22% of the surgeries performed were considered inconclusive, with risks and benefits approximately equal. This leaves just 44% of the procedures conducted being deemed appropriate. Women and younger patients, as well as people with less pain and disability, were more likely to have inappropriate knee replacement surgeries. There have also been shown to be large inconsistencies in practice patterns throughout the country. A study looked at the regional differences in knee replacement rates in over 24 million patients in the U.S. After adjusting for patient characteristics, the study found significant variation in rates of total knee replacement across different regions of the country. In rural areas, knee replacements was more likely to be substituted for conservative interventions. Decision-making for knee replacement also differed among regions, with some regions having lower thresholds for surgery. These inconsistencies are attributed partly to the lack of consensus about when a total knee replacement is indicated, as there is no single criteria to decide whether to proceed with a total knee replacement. Rather, the decision is based on multiple factors to determine an individual's appropriateness for surgery. Evidence-based guidelines from organizations such as the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons suggest that total knee replacements may be appropriate in those with radiographic evidence of joint damage who have moderate to severe knee pain and disability that interferes with daily activities. But as you can see, these are vague and very subjective criteria, leaving much room for interpretation. While imaging tests such as x-rays and MRI can provide some information about the extent of joint damage, there is no widely accepted standard for measuring the severity of knee arthritis. And what is seen on the image is just one part of the surgical decision-making process, and it doesn't come without its flaws. Research has shown a poor correlation between the severity of pain symptoms and changes seen on diagnostic imaging. Those with significant knee arthritis can have minimal to no pain at all, while those with very minimal arthritis experience severe pain and disability. This is because pain is not always an accurate indicator of tissue injury. Those with knee arthritis have been shown to have higher prevalences of what is termed central sensitization, which is a process by which the nervous system becomes overreactive and amplifies pain signals, resulting in heightened pain processing and reduced pain tolerance. In other words, the body's alarm system goes off when it shouldn't. So pain can be less of a structural issue and more of a sensory processing issue. And replacing the knee wouldn't do much good in these cases and may even worsen symptoms. And our healthcare system's failure to utilize safer and more cost-effective conservative interventions is not helping the issue. As the national referral rates for physical therapy for common orthopedic conditions, such as knee arthritis, is a depressing 7 to 20% with referral rates to surgeons increasing over the years. So what should be done about this? Well, there needs to be better education and communication between doctors and patients to ensure the appropriate use of knee replacement surgery. Those with knee arthritis need to be made aware of alternative treatment options, like physical therapy, which may be just as effective for many patients, especially those with mild to moderate cases of arthritis. There is strong evidence to support the use of physical therapy, including exercise and manual interventions to improve pain, physical function, and quality of life in those with knee arthritis, 
with benefits seen in the short and long term. Patients who receive physical therapy have even been shown to be less likely to undergo knee replacement years after. These findings highlight the importance of considering less risky and invasive treatment options, especially in those who are not yet candidates for surgery or wish to avoid surgery altogether. To recap, the overutilization of total knee replacement surgery is a concerning issue and affects thousands. While the procedure could be life-changing for some, there is a growing body of evidence suggesting that a significant number of these surgeries may be unnecessary. The lack of consensus about when a total knee replacement is indicated and the large inconsistencies in practice patterns throughout the country are contributing factors to this problem. By increasing the awareness and access to less risky and invasive treatment options, we can improve patient outcomes and reduce the unnecessary use of knee replacement surgeries. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Physio Show. If you did, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to help us grow and continue to provide you with quality physical therapy-related content.